Hi everybody, welcome back to The Clean Scalpel. Today we'll be going over um, needle reloading. As you can see today, Nacho has joined me and uh, he says he wants to help uh, show everybody how to practice it. So again, the goal is always to make sure that we think about surgery as professional athletes think about their sport, something that requires time, diligence, and of course, the most fun thing, which is practice. So today guys, specifically, we're gonna go over how do you get the needle back to the needle driver. It's taken me a while to think about this, and really I've broken it down into three major ways that most people do it, and uh, we'll go over that and of course over how we can practice these techniques. Um, so let's get started. Today we won't really need a lot of stuff. We'll need a, uh, a pickup of any kind, we'll need a needle driver, and any kind of suture. Again, the focus will not necessarily be on the needle itself until the last portion of it. Uh, we will just go over the three major techniques. Okay, so let's talk about technique number one, hand reloading. So anytime you take a bite, okay, uh, most people supinate, pronate, and then get the needle back in. This way is nice because you can set the needle exactly how you want it to be. So I grab the tip of the needle, okay, and I'm holding it in between my thumb and my index finger, and then I ch change the orientation of my needle driver, and I put it exactly where I want it for the next bite. So the couple things you'll notice that most people don't talk about is as I'm reloading, it's not in my hand. I see a lot of people floating in the middle of space. No, my hands are actually rested on either the patient, uh, somebody else's hand, or the, the bed. This allows you to have a lot of stability as you reload the needle. So what are the benefits? Like I said, number one, it's the stability. You can reload the needle exactly and perfectly. The downside of it is it's an extra step. You're putting your hands in there, obviously putting them at risk for injury. Um, if, you, if you stick yourself, that's always an infectious risk. If you were using your left hand for anything else, retraction, um, keeping the tissue uh, held, then obviously you, you lose that ability. But the big perk is, is that you can get the needle set exactly where you want it to be set. Okay, So that's the first and simplest way. I see most medical students and interns doing this. When they can't get the angle just right, they'll pick it up, they'll grab the needle, and they'll reload it. Okay, So that's quick and easy, step number one, hand reloading. Now, number two, and this is the way I see most people do it, pick it and stick it, or using the, the pickup for the rest of the bite. So you take the bite, okay, and then most people will just grab it. Now remember, as you do grab it, you want to use the curve of the needle. So I'm not just pulling it out. I'm using the curve of the needle to guide the suture and the needle out. Now once it's in this form, okay, you let your hands relax, and then you can get your needle driver back there and place it where you need to go. Now, this is something I think I see more often uh, interns do. But what they'll do when they're setting the needle is that they'll take their left hand and they'll hold it over top of it, especially, especially medical students will do this. They'll, they'll grab it like this so it doesn't move, then they'll set it and reload it. The benefit of this technique is that, number one, unlike hand reloading, you are not necessarily putting your hands at risk. You're, number two, in certain deep situations where you're down in the belly, uh, you can't necessarily reload the needle with other techniques and you don't want to reach in there to grab the needle. This is usually the best way to secure the needle and get it out of the field so you can reload it appropriately. The downside of it is, again, you're using your left hand for something, okay? You're using it to reload and therefore if you were using your left hand for any kind of retraction um, to show yourself the bite or to hold the tissue in place, then you would lose that ability. The best way to learn this technique and practice it is just to grab at about 25% of the needle. Let the heel about 80 to 100% sit on a surface and then you can just rotate the needle and you can get it to whatever angle you need to get it to as you reload it, okay? But this is a really easy exercise, guys. Take the bite, okay? Grab the needle, make sure you rotate it out. Once it's out, remember, rest your don't let them float up here. Rest your hands. 
then reload the needle. So that's method number two. The third method is the method that I prefer myself. It is a little bit challenging in deeper cases, but it is the pure needle manipulation. And guys, this is something I'm very excited to share because this is what we've been working up to. Uh, so I'm going to just change a few things at the camera and then we will be right back. Okay guys, so I've made some small changes and let's get to it. So again, this is my preferred method of needle reloading, especially in most vascular cases. And this is kind of how it goes and we'll talk through the process. So again, you take any bite in the tissue, okay? Now, this is where most people find it challenging, but we will go over it step by step. So the needle right now is inside the tissue. What we're going to do is we're going to pronate our hand, and we're going to rotate it so that about 75% of the needle is still sticking in the tissue. So what you see here, guys, is that I'm going to change the needle a little bit so you can see how much is actually sticking out. The 75% mark is actually inside the tissue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab at the 50% mark of the needle. Once I grab at the 50% mark, if I push the needle, it'll go away from me. If I pull the needle, it'll come towards me. Okay, and that's how you are able to reload the needle without actually using your left hand or pickups. Okay, so I'll show you guys that one more time. I'll change the angle a little bit. So taking the bite, okay, letting the needle slide through, I'm pronating, pulling it so that only 75% of the needle is sticking inside the tissue, exposing the 50% mark grabbing it, pushing it away or pulling it towards myself, and you can see how the needle rotates. I'm not necessarily clicking the needle driver on, otherwise that'll secure it. Once it's in the location I want, I click the needle driver, locking it in its place, and then I pronate, allowing the needle to stay stuck in that location. Let's see that from a different angle so everyone can see it. Here's the needle, taking the bite, Okay, grabbing the needle, rotating it again until 75% of the needle is inside the tissue, exposing the 50% mark, grabbing it but not closing it. If I push away, it's an angle away. If I pull towards me, the needle will automatically become an acute angle. Okay, so the benefits of this last technique are pretty obvious. Um, number one, you don't really need to use your left hand, which allows you to hold retraction, hold tissues towards where you need it to be held. Um, number two, um, because your left hand is free, it allows for certain advanced things like counter tension when you're taking bites into a very calcified vessel. The downside of this technique, guys, is that it takes a lot of practice. There is a very high learning curve to this technique. And when you do do it, it does look slick. But to get it consistently where you can actually control how the needle is going to be facing, that takes some time. And what this will force you to do is that as you're taking the bite and then you're reloading it, you are now thinking about how am I going to set up the needle for the next bite. So it forces a little bit of a chess match in your mind where you're saying, okay, I'm going to take this bite and I'm going to pick it up like this so it'll allow me to reload for the next bite. This will kind of force that thought process, and I think that's always a good thing. So again, that is my preferred method. Why? Because it looks slick, number one. Number two, um, uh, num it really allows you to use your left hand to keep some of the tissues out, give yourself some counter tension. Um, and number three, I just think that it's a more efficient technique. I've uh, worked with people that are pure pick it and stick it, and they do it really, really well. They can control the needle angle really well, and they're very efficient with it. So you know what? That sounds perfect to me. Continue to do that. Uh, I'm a little bit of a hybrid on uh, vessels and, 
and uh, structures that are not so deep, I usually do, do needle manipulation. Now, if I'm operating down uh, in an aorta, then where you need a left hand to give yourself some counter tension. Um, but these aortic bites, you want to be really perfect. So I do find myself doing some picket and stick it. And then in some really tough angles, I just pick up the needle with my hand and reload it so I know it's a perfect angle that I want to take for that bite. So again, guys, this is to show you that there are different ways. And the best thing to do, again, is to go and practice this. All of these things, like we've talked about before, can be practiced on either a banana peel or an apple peel. Okay, guys, so this is something really exciting. I... Um, Love that you guys are still staying in. I love all the questions some of the medical students have been sending me. And thank you again for the residents, for the support. Again, like and subscribe. It really helps. And please comment because uh, I want to know what to pursue next. My goal at this point is to, is to talk about how to practice working in a hole. Uh, this includes not only tying knots, which we'll, we'll probably go over next, but also taking bites. Okay, well, until next time, guys, uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you then.